How's it going, man? How's it going, brother? Who, who's who's brain cells? What? <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, you alright? Yeah, good man. Oh, Obviously, man. we haven't spoken to you uh, since the a couple of weeks ago. Obviously, your last fight, you actually announced that you're retiring. What's life like as a retired fighter? Um, I look at my big belly every morning in the mirror. <laughs> you old man, <laughs> and it mate, it feels so good. It, it does. It, it generally does. I don't have the anxiety of, oh, when's the next one? When's the next one? Or the pressure of, I have to get to the gym and train 200 miles an hour this evening. I go to the gym in my own time. I get to the gym, have a coffee with everyone, with sugars in, not sweeteners, and diet. not have to worry about calories. I can train the kids. I can do PTs because I don't have to go running now. Like I, I still exercise now to keep my health up, obviously. But um, there's no stress of it all, and it, it's nice, man. Sounds like you're enjoying things. That is the word. I was like, oh, yeah, it is, man. I, I think I was, in a way, waiting for this for a while, um, and in the constant when you back, when you back, when you back, make me go back to fighting again. I said it. If, I said it the past probably two, three fights. Like I wanted a break, and I just kept fighting, and I, and I never really knew why. And you know, you you guys obviously, anyone would know. Like when you're in a training camp for a fight, the last thing you should be thinking is, "Fuck, should I be doing this?" Mm-hmm. You should be a hundred percent. I was I was having yeah. them thoughts, and I, that to me was a sign of right. We just knock it on the head for a bit. Because this is what you really want to focus on, and yeah, I I, I can honestly say, hand on heart, now I've said and kind of spoke what was on my mind, the peace I now have in my head, and how happy I feel in general, just in general life. I feel like a weight's been lifted, man. Like, and I feel like yeah. now I've now I've said I wanted to retire, as in I don't want to fight. People have stopped asking me when I'm next fighting. Like I don't have to now worry about that constant being pestered. If you get what I mean. Mm. Um, yeah. Do, do you do you think it's sort of closed forever, or do you think it might be something you go back to later on in life? Uh, it's it's always going to be a massive part of me, like always. And I think the reason why I kind of. I hated fighting so much was the dieting. Well, everyone hates it, don't get me wrong. But my lifestyle at the time on a building site, etc., which I'm no longer on, but we can obviously talk to that and about that in a minute. Um, I couldn't cope. My stress levels were through the roof every single day. I was fighting against people that are training twice a day. Got more time to train than me. And I felt like I was just... Uh, constantly being late for everything because i was working for people then trying to financially stay stable trying to run the hubs obviously doing what i was doing with leapfrog i couldn't do it and i was just yeah stressed all the time and stressed on fight camp is not what you want it it smashes your camp to pieces it just makes things a lot harder for you and then being stressed whilst trying to strip 10 kilos off your body over nine weeks it's just it's just a recipe for just Mental, like, yeah, calm. mental stress, man. You do a uh, lot though with the Muay Thai hub and stuff like this as well. You're an active person, man. Very yeah, active it, person. It's just, <laughs> I would, I would never ever have it any other way, ever. Like, I'm so happy with what I've done, what I've accomplished so far. I've only had them for like a year and a half, and like even to think that, like, where they are now to what 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 stage they're at, it's mental. Like, literally mad to think how, I, how I've managed to kind of do it. And admittedly, at the start, I had a little bit of help from a good friend of mine, Luke, but I've pretty much done it all by myself. Um, and all off an iPhone. People get shocked when I say that. I, I've run, I've done everything off an iPhone. I haven't used any fancy cameras or anything like that. I've got an iPhone 14, and that's what I've done. I started on X, an iPhone X, which compared to standard camera qualities nowadays that's it's not great yeah, but i think yeah, the, yeah. the the content i was posting was something people actually interacted with as such if you get what i mean 
Do you think it's been important for you to have specific pages for the specific content? Like I see you've got the boxing hub, you've got the more yes. the K1 hub. Yeah, definitely. Um, big part of the growth, do you think? And yeah, why you, as well? Yeah, you guys would probably relate to this. There's different fan bases. Obviously, you, you guys might favour... I know you guys are big boxing fans. You, you or MMA fans, etc. And I know you're now Muay Thai fans. Obviously, it's great. But um, Taekwondo, it's not really your guys' cup of tea. If I started a, started uploading Taekwondo on a page which you're expecting to see Muay Thai on, it kind of just makes you go, oh, more Taekwondo, and it it makes you more unlikely to follow in my eyes. Mm. It, it might, this is just my complete opinion. But I think, yeah, the fact that I've got separate pages now, it's enabled me to kind of explore the boxing world a bit because I've met so many people through boxing now. Like, I've solely kind of almost got my page to just complete boxers. And then I'm, I'm hopefully getting the kickboxing one soon to just complete kickboxers, the MMA to complete MMA fighters. It's still a little bit of a mix at the moment, but I'm I'm aiming to eventually get it to the point where it's all divided and I can tailor for each fan base. But every now and then, because of the collaboration feature, if I've got something on there where it kind of relates to all fighting as such, or any of the clothing, I can collab it all, mm. which then links all four pages together. And an MMA fan who also likes boxing goes, oh, they've got a boxing page. I'm going to follow that. It's, it's, like when the, uh, yeah, it's, it's like when the Power Rangers all come together and power up, man. <laughs> <laughs> they make that big big motherfucker the yeah, unstoppable they, one they make, yeah they make the big hub yeah. <laughs> they make the porn <laughs> hub yeah, <you> got <laughs> all pages come together and make the porn so, hub yeah, you've got you've oh. got the hubs and then when they collab together they're the hub yeah, that's how yeah. I see it <laughs> yeah 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 that's, that's how I see no, it I'm with you I'm with you and then obviously every now and then I advertise it on my advertise it on my personal one but yeah, that, that's it really. I'm I'm over the moon with where my life is at the moment. I think everything is just brilliant. UK Muay Thai kickboxing boxing scene and the, even the grassroots MMA, mate, they are killing it. Yeah, everyone is killing it, and everyone's on the rise because there's more media coverage. And we are we are going to get onto that as well because obviously we love having you on. You're a great analyst. You're great at talking about sport. You have a good understanding of everything. So we do we do want you here most weeks when we're doing it to to give us all the news on Muay Thai events coming up or any sort of events you're involved in. Obviously, heavily involved with LeapFrog. You you work for them now, so you're at all these events. What what are some big shows that people need to be on the lookout for? Some big shows that you've been to recently that are like, yeah, I need to talk about this or some big fights or big fighters or anything like that? So obviously, um, Muay Thai, is this just Muay Thai wise you'd like me to talk about? Or... Yeah, let's go Muay Thai. We'll go Muay Thai. Let's go Muay Thai. So obviously, I was at Raw Combat, Raw Fighting Championship. Sorry, it used to be called Raw Combat back in the days where I was on it. It's been around for a long, long time. And the promoter is Christian Knowles and Katie Knowles. Um, these guys have been around the sport for donkey years, like years upon years, a lot longer than I have. Christian Knowles, obviously, worldwide known as the guy that trains Jonathan Haggy and owns the Nolsey Academy. The guy knows his stuff, and him and Kate between them are amazing matchmakers, like incredible matchmakers. And they put on a card every single time that amazes me, absolutely amazes me. And when I was given the option to go to Raw, and they were like, right, Raw needs someone to go to it. I was like, yep, me, because... It's just full of everything. I said it on the interview I did with Danny Kendrick. It's full of full of knockouts, exciting bouts, title bouts. You've had Haggerty on there before he went to one. But that's the kind of fighters they've got on Raw. Um, they've got Chef on there. They've had Lyndon Knowles on there, who's the former WBC heavyweight champion of the world. Like That's the standard of fighters you deal with. But they also have grassroots on there as well. So it's just amazing. that You've got grassroots fighters, and then your, your headline events are literally one championship fighters. And then... On the same day, uh, on Saturday, you had Road to Combat Fight Series. Obviously, Combat Fight Series, a show you guys have been to yourselves. You know how good Rory is as a matchmaker. Mm -hmm. um, this was more of a, a Road 2 show. So, I think he only had a couple of pro fights on there. But again, knockouts galore. Like, he had junior fights <laughs> at the highest level. Like, And then he had Tyler Hogan and Taweb. Um, Taweb fighting out of the Pride Combat Athletics Academy. Apparently, they, these two were going at it 
And then I think Tyler put an end to it in the later rounds. Tyler Hogan's one of them that's just clearing up at the moment. Mm. Absolutely clearing up. He's beating everyone in front of him. Um, he also said about fighting me, uh, but I'm retired now. <laughs> He's called <laughs> out. Belly. He's called out the boy. Um, <laughs> but no, I've got a lot of respect for Tyler. He's one of those. He just he likes to sell his fights. He likes to promote. He likes to just get in there and have a fight. And I've got a lot of time for him. I've got a lot of time for anyone like that. Like they're they're just trying to make their fights. Yeah. Um, so going back to it, combat fight series. There was a big knockout with a lad from Minotaur's gym. Yeah. Big head kick knockout that was posted on Leapfrog. Um, this weekend you've got uh, Ronin coming up. Um, this weekend coming. Yeah. That's a great show. It's got uh, K1, I believe, some boxing and Muay Thai on it. That's a brilliant show hosted by a great friend of mine, Jeremy Bailey. That's live on Leapfrog and free for members. Um, or there is a pay per view option available, I believe. But again, it's just available at your fingertips. Um, that's a show I have is quite close to me as well. I've judged on that quite a few times in the past. Um, he's his cards are just entertaining, is the word I would say. He's got it all, got it all. Literally, a good quality cards with just brawlers that just love to. Ignore the points, Scrap. ignore the scoring, and just go at it. And for a fan, even an official, it's just it's just carnage, and it's amazing. <laughs> it is, it is, I like what what a time to be a fight fan. What a time to be a fight fan, especially now with Leapfrog doing what they're doing. Close to Christmas as well, putting on these big, getting these big shows out there. People are sort of chilling at this time of year, sitting back, saying, "Shit, TV's kind of dead right now. What are we putting on?" Straight on Leapfrog Fight TV, man. You can watch bangers galore, and you, you can you can link it to your TV and things like that because it is now on an app. That's where it's perfect. Yeah. How can you link it to your TV? Yeah, yeah. There's a because <coughs> obviously if you've got an iPhone and you're on the app, yeah, you can like there's share. A, screen. There's a screen share button. Oh, okay. Literally ping us up, done. You've got literally a night in sorted for six ninety nine a month. Twenty it's like twenty something per day. I think J- like twenty pence a day. JT's putting you on game, man. It's <laughs> like um Yeah, it's just mental. And then obviously aside from the Ronin, you've got you've got we've got two two other shows on Saturday as well. So if you don't like the Muay Thai, the boxing's there. Like the amount of boxing shows Luke Frog's got on there at the moment, mental. Yeah, they're doing a lot of boxing shows, aren't they? Yeah, it's because the, the the boxing guys are seeing the future. They're seeing it because it is like Lee Frog are giving people stuff that no one's ever done before. And I'm not just saying that because I'm employed by them now. Like they, they generally are the proof's in the pudding. Anyone that's worked with Lee Frog has been like amazed by what they're doing and what they're giving back. Like the guys at Raw were literally like. Wow, this is uh, this is brilliant. They've got a high level stream. Myself and Kian, Kian's very good on the clips. So Kian was doing the clips. I was doing the interviews. You've got higher standard, great in interviews that are now been all edited because that's now my job to do. They've been edited within a couple of days. They're all ready to post. I just didn't, haven't posted them all yet because I didn't want to spam everyone. Um, Kian's got the clips all done. Like it's all done because it's our job to do and there was 15 staff members out doing the same thing just on saturday yeah, they're, they're, yeah they're, that's good they're, man. They're, they're like they've grown like a whole army now like that yeah, and, what... and that's within the space of a year like from, yeah. from when we met them to now it's like their team is like boom yeah and that's what i mean that they generally are the future they're, they're, they're doing things that and for, and i i give credit to anyone that's helping promote the sport like brilliant amazing you're doing a great job keep going keep doing it but promotion wise like any promoter that's worked with leapfrog has just been blown away like blown away by what they give because we are helping the sport we're promoting the sport and we're doing it whilst giving back we're not draining the promoter of loads of money we're not doing that because we're not in it for that we're not in it for the money we're in it for the long run we're in it to get the sport to where it should be and we're not talking about just muay thai with that we're talking about grassroots boxing which you guys know, you've got loads of guests on here that do boxing and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Grassroots boxing, everyone has to start from that grassroots grassroots level. You've got the Jonathan Haggerty's, you've got... By the hell, when Floyd Mayweather had his first fight, it weren't at the bloody casino, <laughs> big casino in Vegas, was yeah, it? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You have to start somewhere, and if you can get an interview with these guys from the get-go and give them that push to stay in the sport, keep going, 
get that footage of them when they're completely at their amateur stage. Like you, you've got so much content for them. And it's relationship yeah. building as well. You've built a relationship with them from from the ground up. Do you know what I mean? When no one else was sort of trying to give them interviews, no one else was really paying attention to them, really. No. Well, Alfie Pierce is a great example. And this is where um, I think Amir from Leapfrog showed his true, true kind of intentions. When Alfie Pierce was having one of his first ever fights, no one interviewed him but Amir. Amir interviewed him. And then when Alfie was fighting for the on the main event of Rajadam Stadium, which is one of the highest accomplishments anyone could ever do, was the only Brit ever to contest for a British Muay Thai, uh, a Rajadam Stadium title in Thailand. No one's ever been able to get that, ever. Yeah. That's like unheard of for a Brit to be doing that in Thailand. Amir was the only one with footage of Alfie in his early career. Like it's mad man, isn't it? But that that's the that but and that's nothing against anyone. I'm just saying what, what Leapfrog is doing, we we care They got about the love, everyone. that's why. We care about yeah. absolutely everyone. I do not care if you've had twenty fights or two, you are getting an interview. It, and, the thing and is you I'm, make the fighter feel special as well. Yeah, and it, it's, I'm I'm not just the one that thinks that, it's every single person that's a part of Leapfrog. We all think the exact same. And it's it's one of those things where it, it right if you don't want to do the sport in five years, fine. But here's all the memories to go with it. Mm, if you want yeah. to, here we go. Here's all the materials. Here's all the content you need to advertise yourself to the highest possible level to make your account look as professional as can be, to get you the sponsors you need, to get you that exposure you need, to build you that fan base you need. There, there, there's so many things that Leapfrog sets people up with that they don't really think about. They think we go to shows, film stuff, go home and post it up. Like we're not doing that. We're building we're building foundations. We're mm. literally building uh, a platform for fighters to grow up. Like literally for fighters. I, I see um they they done a recent post as well, obviously getting people to vote in for like fighter of the year, coach of the year. Um who 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 do you actually think's been a fighter of the year for you you don't have to name just one who, who's sort of like maybe a top three that you think have really performed this year in Muay Thai so I commented on nearly all of them saying this is just too hard to choose from because what do you when you when you when you look for a fighter what do you look for do you base it on just accomplishments do you base it on whether they're juggling three jobs do you base it on whether they've got a family of eight and still manage to find time to fight and support their family do you base it on whether they're a coach? Do you base it on whether they've come back after a seven-fight losing streak? That isn't aiming at anyone if I've accidentally put you yeah. in a category. Yeah, no, I don't <laughs> the of my head, sorry. Um, yeah, what, when you, that's the thing. When you look for a fighter, what do you look for? Do you look for the, like, do you look for the accomplishments? Because accomplishments-wise... You've obviously, you've got brackets like, when you think of UK fighters, you've got brackets like Haggerty knocking out Nongo. Or it could be a junior that's been bullied at school and managed to have a fir his first fight and win. Yeah. To me, them, them accomplishments are still huge. But they're completely different accomplishments. So who's the, who's the bigger fighter? It all depends on how you see it. In my eyes, that's how mm. I think. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. obviously, I know there are other people like um, accomplishments and stuff like that that people base it on accomplishments, and rightly so. There should always be a top boy. I'm a big firm believer in you, whoever's at top should get the gold medal and stuff like that because that's true. That's what otherwise it wouldn't be worth aiming for as such. Um, but yeah, I, I'm a very big believer in everyone should be praised for their own accomplishments. And for achieving stuff that's hard to do, mm. that's my answer. Because I haven't said any any names there other than Haggy, really. <laughs> so I can't be done for being biased. Answer, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, who who's what? Uh, how far do you think Tom Kirk can go? Obviously, we had him on when we had you on. Obviously, he's been on a tear this year as well. You've done sparring with him. How 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 far? Where's his ceiling? He is going to take the world by storm. And I'm not saying that because he he is the I 
He's honestly one of the nicest blokes I've ever had the pleasure of being punched by. Like, he's genuinely so, so nice. He's so weird. Like, you watch him fight, you think this bloke must be such a horrible person because of how much he just tears through people. And I don't mean that as in a horrible person in the way he acts or anything like that. He's just vicious. He just knocks people out, and when he knocks them out, they're out. And then he takes his gloves off, and he's just a gentleman. Like, the bloke, the bloke literally is, is so kind. Me and him were messaging each other, because obviously we both fought, fought on Hitman. We were messaging each other, and I was going to him, Tom, what are you eating after this way, mate? I'm starving. And he was telling me what he's eating and all that. Oh, I can't wait to eat this, that, and the other. <laughs> Like, we, we've spoke so much, and he's a fighter I've got a lot of time for. He's a genuinely one of the nicest blokes I've ever had the opportunity to meet. Um, and he's going to he's gonna take the world by storm. He, no one's been able to beat him. No one has been able to beat him. Yes, people have been able to land shots on him, etc., etc., but he's, he's knocked him out. And that's something he's a pit bull, man. He is. I, I remember sparring him he and is. thinking, like... I'm doing all right here. I'm doing all right. Bang! Jesus Christ! <laughs> like, his, his hands are just killer. Absolutely killer. Like, how he just... He just hits you, and you don't see it coming. Don't see it coming. The way he disguises everything, and his footwork's perfect, his hands are perfect, he's fast, he's powerful, he's got, he's got everything to fight, and he needs to be successful. And... um He's got the tools. He does. He's got the tools, and I, I think he's he's going to tear the world up. To literally tear the world up, hundred percent. Who who's been a fighter for you? We'll say over from the last time he spoke to you. So any of the shows you've been to from now to then. So we'll we'll call it your fighter of the month. Someone who on them shows you looked at and was like, wow, that was a great performance, or they battled through great adversity, or or just in in your own personal preference. What was your fighter of the month? Um, fighter of the last kind of... Ooh. Do you know what? I'm quite... I'm going to say two. Yeah, and this yeah. is only just because they're in my head right now. I think Alfie, Alfie Pierce deserves a mention. Like the guy's, mm -hmm. the guy's moved over to Thailand by himself to follow his dreams. And what he's doing out there, he's just knocked out someone at Lumpini Stadium in the second round, I believe. Right? Don't hate me if it was the wrong round. Um, I think it was the second. An elbow. He's one of those fighters that has literally given up everything to achieve his dream. And he's achieving it. And he's a dictionary definition of just follow your dreams and put 100% into it. Is he making waves in Thailand? Mate, he's clearing up. Like I said, he was he was contesting for the Rajadam Stadium title, which no Brit has ever been able to do. Like he was about to make history, and unfortunately, because it was uh, so close, uh, he took the fight on such short notice, couldn't make the weight, so the title was not not available. But mate, to even be f like fourth by the tires for something like that, mm. mental. Yeah, he's and a beast, lost, man. Yeah, and he's 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 only lost like one fight out of like I, I don't even know how many fights the bloke's had now. I think, I think he's, he's had, like, on, like yeah, he's he's high teens because I, I mean, feel like when he left England, he might have been on like 12, 11 or twelve. Yeah. And oh yeah, he's, he's touching twenty. Yeah, yeah, he's, 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 had, like, he's 10 high teens. Yeah. Um, it's it's mad. It's absolutely mad. And my second fighter, I had him at the weekend. Um, the reason I'm saying this is. Because he had a couple of losses, but from wars, which he just looked great in. And it was one of those where, unfortunately, Muay Thai, it's one of those sports where you're always going to have someone winning and someone losing. That's just life. But uh, Mike Collier, lovely bloke. Um, the Thai style he has, it's just beautiful. The bloke's legs are enormous. Like his thighs, are, I, I, have, I call him Quadzilla. Yeah, his fires were just like tree trunks, and uh, he had a hard fight at the weekend. And I, I, every time I've seen him, he's fought on combat fight series a few times down in um, down in uh, Bournemouth, and uh, he's always had a war, always had a war, but he always just comes short. And I, I almost feel gut, felt gutted for him because he's so good, and seeing a fighter that's so good, just about lose out every time. I was gutted for him. And he got a really, really big win at the weekend. 
And he's just one of them blokes who just kept getting up, kept getting up and up and up. And he won at the weekend, and I'm so happy for him. And that's nothing against his opponent. That's nothing biased towards him. I'm just talking about a guy that's managed to just get himself up off the canvas so many times and come back. And I think that's someone that everyone should look at for that specific type of accomplishment as well. Yeah. Because tie yeah. boxing is, is very based upon heart. And um, the ties love anyone that can kind of take a big dig and carry on going and stuff like that. Like heart's a big thing for <laughs> the ties. Brutality. Yeah, take, taking the pain. Take it. Pushing yeah. through it and not quitting. And he's one of them blokes that just didn't didn't refuse to kind of pack in. And he just got the win of the weekend. And I was really chuffed for him. And so then obviously... Uh, Mark, you said it was Mark guy, Collier. Uh, Mike. Say Mike Collier. Shout out Mike Collier. Mike. Joe then, Turner's fighter of the month. Yeah, and there was uh, another guy. Sorry, I'm going on. But another guy I know, um, Dan Morley. Again, half few couple of wins. Just about coming short, getting caught or anything like that. He's just had a harsh couple of wins. And nice blokes who I see grinding day in and day out. Like, de- devoted everything. Come back, first round KO at the weekend. Yeah, that's good, man. I, I, again, this is nothing against his opponent whatsoever. I'm not saying I'm happy their opponent lost like that. I'm happy for him to come back after a loss because it's seeing someone come back through hell mm. and come back to that happy place of winning a fight. I, I was made up for him. Do you know Absolutely. what we'll do as well? We, what we'll do is, because obviously the fight of the month and stuff like that, you've named two, obviously. We'll put a poll up. And we'll let the people decide on their on their fighter um, out of the two. Whoever wins, we'll bring them on the next live show. We'll do a Zoom them. We'll talk about their career and um, how they got to where they got to. Yeah, amazing. So yeah, um, between and then the we two... get we get another guy on. We get to speak to him. We get to talk about his accomplishments and uh, and yeah, man, it'll be it, it, it's it's a good way of rewarding him for that for that for that sweat equity. Yeah, so yeah, the options for me would be either Alfie Pierce, Dan Morley, or oh, Alfie Pierce is 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 is, is someone we we we're trying to get a pod with. That I'm, I'm like, as soon as he comes, I've, I've been speaking to him. As soon as he comes, yeah, back into the UK, that one's that one is well and truly yeah, lined um, up. But we'll go Mike Collier and Dan Morley. It's just because they, these guys just refuse to quit. Yeah, they, ref, they refuse to quit, and I admire that massively. You you can't you can't fault someone for doing that, and that's someone that I think kids should look up to. Yeah, for doing stuff like that, massively. They're people you will go to the trenches with. Exactly, they're, they're never in a boring fight either. They're fan no. favourites. I did, I did actually. We do actually have some questions here for you as well um, from people. Dream Muay Thai matchups you want to see? Got to be uh, Haggerty and Nico, isn't it? Gotta be. If Nico does Nongo, yeah. it's got to happen. It's got to. It's got to happen. Please happen, please. <laughs> <laughs> because it's if every fight fan in across, uh, it's not even just the UK. I think worldwide people would want to see that. Because I know we we spoke about this obviously the last time I was on it. Haggerty's is just enough said. Haggerty. That's all I need to say. Haggerty. But Nico is massive. He's fit. He's got a great camp behind him that no Haggerty. And Nico is just clever. So it would be a battle. And it would definitely be a battle that I think one championship should look at. Who do you who 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 would you pick though to win? Like off of off of skill, <laughs> fundamental. Um I don't know. I, I can't call it because I don't want to, in all honesty. Mm-hmm. I, <laughs> whew, you guys could crucify me if I put an opinion up. <laughs> um, I'm not going to pick a winner because they both are unbelievable, unbelievably talented athletes. But I, I feel, I've always been one of those that I get almost got offended when someone said the word talented. Because they, uh, these guys, again, grind day in and day out. They aren't talented. They're hard workers. They work for what they have. They do. They really do. And Nico and Jonathan Haggerty are prime examples of someone that have just grind, grinded day in and day out to get what they've got. They haven't just been handed anything. They, they've they gone out and got it. 
So um, again, people that kids should look up to, like Haggerty and Nico, like wow. We'll poll that. We'll poll that one as well and see yeah. which one. Um, I, what I the think, people think, man. I think that that'd be a uh, interesting poll. That one. People in the comments, there's a few people watching. Comment down below. Um, who do you actually think will win out of Nico Carrillo and John Haggerty? Obviously, hopefully Carrillo beats Nongo, and then that fight's kind of that they're going to have to be made. That fight makes sense. Obviously, yeah, that fight makes sense. You know they're making that. Hundred percent. They'd be stupid not to. It's be, it'd be a money fight as well, because yeah, of course, yeah. Obviously, any anyone Haggerty fights is a money fight, but. I mean, Nico brings the the whole King of the North, the whole mm. West Crown after he's had his fight and stuff like that. Like, I think they're two characters. They're not. They're not the most. The guys that that they they show their they show how they feel as such when they uh when they win, like Haggerty running about in the confetti. Yeah. It all yeah. Happens. <laughs> It, like I've seen him comment on people that have called him out before, going like, "You will get knocked out," like just flat, "You will get knocked out." Like he, he's a, he's a man that just is almost just like, "Come on, in son, like let's do it." Yeah. And I, I, I admire him. Like he's one of those that's, again, just branded himself amazingly, absolutely amazingly, and not only this is another thing as well. Um, I'm not quite sure if I'm going over my time limit. No, no, no. You're good. You're good. You're good. Go on, you these, go, guys, boys. these guys on their social media accounts, unbelievable. They're posting regularly. They're putting good quality pad work videos up. They're showing what they're doing in training. They're doing interviews with everyone. They're, they're, they're begging people, like not almost begging people, but they're begging people to kind of be, they're, they're almost no, not begging. That's the wrong word. They're forcing people to look at their Instagrams because they're everywhere. And that's what I've been trying to say to fighters, and that's always been my aim on the hubs, is to teach people how to, by using a phone, you can make your pages look amazing. Build a fan base, get yourself some sponsors, and it all goes from there. Hmm. And yeah. the, 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 yeah, these sell guys... Sell yourself. Are, sell yourself. I was saying yesterday, as a fighter, you are a brand. A brand that needs selling. If the brand is worthless, it's not going to sell. And that, that that's not like I'm. I'm not saying anyone's worthless. No, please, please don't think that. <laughs> um, I'm saying the more valued you are, the more likely it's going to sell. That, that's simple as. Um, yeah. And that's Joe, Turn. my, my Joe, Joe Turner's getting cancelled after today. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! We did actually have a comment from Roberto as well. He said Scotland versus England at the O2 slash Wembley. I can't see it happening. Um, because they one championship could just fly them out, and I think they would. I think they had they'd they'd have a bigger audience in Thailand. I, I yeah. think they would because that like we all know we'd all watch that, wouldn't we? Like we'd still all watch that. Um, and I don't think I think the majority. Well, I'd, I'd be interested to know where the majority of one's audience is. Because I think it is Thailand, uh, not Asia, sorry. And I think it is now starting to branch branch out into America and stuff like that. I think I don't think if it was on one, they they would do it in London. Mm. Yes, they'd have a lot of people there, but I think for the to have a whole card below it and stuff like that, and then to obviously fill the venue out as such, I don't really think that they'd have the same numbers. I'd like to think they'd have the same numbers. I'd hope to. But it's, it's a tall last for, no, like, they're going to want some sort of, like, it's a, big, it's, a, it's a big investment for the thought of you might only sell half the stadium. Like, it's, it's, it's untested. It's untested land. Do you know what I mean? It's untested yeah. waters for them to just go and do it in O2 or Wembley Arena or something like that. Yeah, so they're only, obviously, they've had row two ones in the UK, obviously, with MTGP and now Hitman, which is great. Absolutely amazing. But they've only been in the Indigo, which is not as big as the actual arena as such. Yeah. So it's, has the UK got the, and I, I fully, fully hope it does. I fully hope it does. So please don't cancel me for this, everyone. <laughs> Has the UK got the capacity for it? Let, let's hope so. 
Because I would love it. Imagine being sat live with a one championship show in your own nation. That'd be incredible. Yeah, that would be pretty mad. UFC still don't do a lot of fights here, though. And they're, they're, you'd say their support here is quite big. What they do, one a year? Yeah, but even then, I'd, I'd still year. be quite interested to know where one uh, UFC's audience is. And that's quite big in America. Yeah. Yeah, UFC is, uh, you, yeah, UFC is obviously mainly America, but it's quite, it's quite, it's it's getting global. Yeah, oh, definitely. I think UFC is definitely up there. I was going to say something. How long's else. one been going for? I don't even know, you know. They've not been going that long, have they? No, it's only really come to everyone's attention probably the past three, four years. Three years, yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean. There's still like a lot of uncharted territory for them to sort of, <coughs> sort of maneuver, to build on. Yeah, to build on. Like, like you said, it's still early days for them, isn't it? And that is a mega fight, and it probably won't be like that's a sort of fight where that ain't going to be one and done. You're talking that could be a potential trilogy fight. Like we're we're mm. talking. So they yeah they they might do two in Thailand and bring one over to the UK. You never you never know, man. But like you said though, it'd be nice to be in the UK because they're UK fighters. It would sell out. It, it, be, well, I hope it would. Thing. I hope it would. It would sell out in some sort of format, whether that would be on a pay-per-view. Wait, we couldn't really sell out a pay-per-view, but you get what I mean. The numbers would be incredible on a pay-per-view or it would sell out a venue. Yeah. I hope it would. I generally hope it would because I know Haggerty would, if Haggerty did ever have a fight in the UK, again, you think about how many people would want to be in that venue. Mm. It's because of how exciting he is as a fighter. And then how exciting Nico is a fire. I, I'm lucky enough that before Nico and before Haggerty went to one, I'm lucky enough to have watched them live. I know what it's like when them guys fight. It's one of those fights where you cannot blink mm. with them guys. You you can't. One, you're lucky enough you've got all the replays, etc., etc. But just being there in person, hearing Nico or Haggerty hit someone is just... Oh, it's mad, man. Mm. Mad. And that these are these are just guys that started out with just hard work. Hard work. There was no talent. Well, there might have been talent, obviously, but I'm not saying that. I'm saying these guys hard graft. work and passion. These guys graft, man, yeah. and they dedicate everything. Nico's nuts as well, man. He gets in the ice baths that's in Scotland in the winter and stuff like that. Yeah. Hard boiled, <laughs> man. But he ain't. Yeah, it'd be a good we, fight, man. If you sold it to me, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for it, man. We, yeah. we actually got the uh, real king right. of the north coming on in the next fifteen minutes, Matt McCallum. So people stay locked in for that one. Joe, is there anything we haven't touched on? Any, any, anything major that we gloss over? Or, or what? What, what, are, what are you guys liking about the Muay Thai scene at the moment? And what do you think will grow it? Um, I, I like how exciting it is in, in person. I think it's very exciting in person. I think the only issue is from my perspective as someone who doesn't know a lot about it. I think it can be very confusing when, mm. like when you're watching, I feel like they do way too many fights, way too many fights on a okay. card. I, I feel like it, like, cause normally we're, we're talking 25 fights from top to bottom, right? 20 maybe minimum. I feel like for the average person, 10 to 12 is like enough. Maybe, maybe, maybe 10 to 12 is too high. When you, when you see traditional boxing cards and MMA cards, it's like 10 fights. But I understand why they do it because of ticket sales. They want to get the kids out. It's very traditional. There's, there's a lot of tradition behind it, but I feel like from, from like my point of view, and I still don't understand who's who in terms of you know you sort of see everyone sort of won some sort of world title or this title or that title yeah, or, they're the world, or they're the area yeah. champion here or there it's, it's confusing to know who is the creme de la creme because then you got one championship but dan mcgowan says said to me he was like look you got to realize one championship is still not really traditional muay thai either some people don't want to go to one championship because the smaller gloves but they're brilliant Muay Thai fighters. So who is the the creme de la creme? Like I, I don't know. Like whereas in the UFC, I know Kamara yeah. Usman or Gilbert Burns or Darren Till or whoever. If they win the UFC title, they are the best MMA fight in the world. In the world, yeah. hands down. Yeah. Whereas so, in Muay Thai, I don't yeah. know. 
You've got your purists, and then you've got your yeah. four-ounce fighters. Yeah, they're they're two different fighters. That that's what I mean. So, like like who who who's whoever's winning the championships in one, they might not even be the best Muay Thai fighter in the world. They might just yeah be the best fighter in four ounce gloves. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because them gloves, I, I get, that, that, them that. gloves make yeah. a big difference. Massively. Been there and done it. They hurt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you did do a four Damn, ounce fight, didn't you? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you did. <laughs> Um, indeed. So that is just my personal opinion on on, on what on uses me. I'd say the same as him, but I actually don't mind watching it. I've watched a couple one championship fights and that. But again, I feel like it gets to a point where there's there's so many fights, and maybe because I'm not a fanatic, it sometimes get it's like long winded. But again, yeah. I feel like that's just you're learning the sport. But then when you go watch it. But there's just mm. so many fights, isn't it? It's such a big day. But then I suppose if you're coming to watch a certain person, it's not really that big of a day, is it, realistically? No. Oh, it just depends how um how you look at it. I would like yeah. to understand in the UK who who like who who who's who's the right person to be watching yeah. for, who's in this league, who's the top guy there. Other than obviously, I know one championship's oh. its own thing. One championship be be its own thing, but when you got all these other events on, it gets kind of confusing. Who who we who we, who? There should be like a rank. Is there a Who's rank? Who's the guy? Who's the there guy? Is, there is there's UK rankings. Uh, you've obviously got the WBC rankings as well, but all the WBC rankings are pure Muay Thai. Um, yeah, so no one's there's there's not actually a rank in the UK, is there? Like this, there is. There, there, there is. You've got, you've got the Thai fighter rankings, um, which is done on weight and stuff like that. But I'm not quite sure if they assess it on. I think you have to fight in the UK, or you have to lose domestically. Mm. Um, I'm not quite sure how that actually works. But my answer to the question about long, or well, my response to it about long cards is obviously being friends with promoters myself. Um, someone's got to pay for it. That's simple as. No, yeah, that's pay, yeah, that, yeah that, that that makes sense. But I feel like if you were to get it really popping i don't think you can have that many fights no i think that's the issue i think that's i think the issue like I the same thing like joe like joe's just touched on there he said someone has to pay for it boxing's heavily yeah, of course, funded of course. mma's heavily is, funded yeah, yeah yeah so these people can afford to lose a bit of money muay thai is still very we're, we're talking it is still at like it's it's here it's at Grass the lowest roots, level really at the minute in the uk so in the box. next 10 years there could be a big player who's like do you know what i love muay thai i'm now a billionaire and i just want to fund muay thai and get it to that level and that could happen because that's what happens in mma like the ufc was funded by the fatitas who owned hotels like a passion like kind of like a passion project and they what, blew what it up yeah, think? Where, how, how's the growth like since you've been in the sport how much has it grown oh my god here um, you're gonna get me in trouble asking me that question um <laughs> exposure wise yes um i yeah yeah growing the opportunities are there and i can chest people like and companies like leapfrog are putting it in the right direction by supporting the grassroots because that's where we need to go man I, I genuinely i firmly believe that the grassroots shows are where it's at because they are the future everyone started on the grassroots and um I think I think by giving more back, teaching fighters how to expose themselves and say, look, I'm fighting on this show. It's very important to me for these reasons that you come and support me. Get as many people from their town as they can to come and support them. That then gives more money back to the show. That then gives the show more money to invest in future shows. The bigger the show, the bigger the money, the bigger the crowd the bigger the fighters can get paid. That's why I originally started the pages, was to teach people how to do that, teach people how to promote. Because there's a lot of promoters out there that don't promote. And uh, if we have every single person that's involved in this sport promote, like literally, I mean, everyone down my road know about Muay Thai. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how you push it. That's why I love what Philippe from Fight TV are doing, man. They are pushing it. Same for you, though. You're pushing it as well. Again, with your pages. It's the passion. Yeah. No, you've got... It comes from love. 
got to throw it down people's throats right? <coughs> to the point where they're like, they know, they know what Muay Thai is. Watch this event now, like kind of because it's what we need. Because I've never but, met anyone that don't go to a Muay Thai show and go, "Wow, that's sick." Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. It minute. can't. It, it's not like it can't be on TV because it is wild, man. It some of the fights are fucking wild, man. I'll come out of there like fucking hell. Up. It's brutal. Yeah, like, well, compared, if you're looking at boxing or even sometimes MMA, like, this is brutal. People coming at each other head to head, kicks, punches. It's just like, this is what we come for war, blood. I want to see blood, splatters, this, that. See, yeah. yeah, it's crazy, man. You, you want to see people in the canvas, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Even, yeah, at, but... um, even like you said, the grassroots shows, like, you still go to the grassroots shows and you're just like, fucking hell, man. These are all killing each other. Like, they're going for it. You yeah, know what I mean, so yeah, it's it's a hard <laughs> one, like you said. This the sports just got um, I feel like with people like you and Leapfrog Fright TV, the sport will grow, it's on a trajectory yeah. of growth, it is growing, and you can see that by one championship. You know, what I mean, I feel like human beings we swing in cycles as well, and I feel like there will be a, a time and a cycle where Muay Thai is the thing, yeah, it I will think... be regardless. The next five years or the next 10 years, it will come here, yeah, it's a fact. Pro promotion. And people realizing that things cost money without like expecting big money. So if you want a nice purse, you need to earn a nice purse as such. Of course, yeah. And I'm speaking like a promoter here. Who's going to pay for it? Like kind of things like that. And also make yourself more valuable. That's the one thing I try to say to people all the time. Make yourself valuable. If you've got an account that's reaching a million people a month, People are going to want to sponsor you. Like, when, start yeah, people, when people start thinking like that, they're going to start picking up more money. <clears throat> and that's right. and that's for the people like... watching, man. Joe Turner's Joe Turner's he's putting you on game. He's uh he's out here. He's living his dream. He's doing interviews. World level fighter Joe. We we'd love to have you on as well. The next time we do one in a couple of weeks, if if it's mate, something you'd be interested in. You, you tell me when and where, mate. And I'm down. I love being on this podcast. It's my <laughs> this, this is my home. <laughs> my home podcast we want to make yeah, it we love having you, you man you got a lot of passion man you love the sport and that's what that's what we love that's what we're here for man but uh, people go follow all the hubs as well um i will after the episode's done i'll link them in the description and uh keep following the right the hubs Turner. the right hubs we're not talking about them 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 porn hubs man because that shit will rot your brain <laughs> I'm talking, <laughs> the boy's talking from experience. The hub's, the hub's and leapfrog. <laughs> yeah, and leapfrog fight TV as well. Okay. Uh